All right, we're now going to continue where we left off by my teaching you how to calculate the amounts of reactants and products. To calculate the amounts of products that will be formed from a given amount of reactant in a chemical reaction, we have to do the following steps. One, balance the chemical equation unless it's already balanced. Two, always convert the amount of reactant to moles or millimoles unless it's already given in moles or millimoles. Now note, I've put six exclamation points here. That means this step is very, very important. Don't leave things in grams or kilograms. Always, always, always convert to moles or millimoles or else you are doing this type of problem wrong. All right, step three. Use the stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced chemical equation to create a reactant to product ratio. And step four, multiply the amount of millimoles you got in step two by the ratio you made in step three. Let's throw a lecture problem at you. When benzene, which has this formula, C6H6, reacts with bromine, bromobenzene is formed according to this chemical equation. When 30 grams of benzene react with excess Br2, how many moles of bromobenzene are made? How many grams? And now, when 20 grams of bromine react with excess benzene, how many moles of HBr are made? How many grams? I'm not going to do both of these, but I will do part A for you and let you tackle part B on your own. Here's how it's done. Remember, step one is balance the chemical equation if necessary. Here's the chemical equation. If you look at it closely, you'll note that it is already balanced. So we're done with step one. Step two. Always convert everything you're given into moles or millimoles, unless it's already given in moles or millimoles. Now we've been given 30 grams of benzene. Is that moles or millimoles? No, no it's not. How do we convert it to moles or millimoles? By using dimensional or unit analysis. You'll note that in converting grams to moles, I'm going to basically put a set of parentheses next door and decide what is in the denominator. What do I want to be in the denominator? Well, I want to cancel out grams of benzene, so I better put grams of benzene in the denominator here. I want to convert to moles of benzene, so what do I put in the numerator? I'm going to put moles of benzene. Now, I've put the numbers here already. I usually advise you, my students, not to do that until you're all done. Where did I get these numbers? Well, you'll note this is the formula weight. One mole of benzene weighs 78 grams. Where did I get 78? Well, each carbon weighs 12, and that, there are six of them. And each hydrogen weighs one, and there are six of them. Add that all together, you get 78. Thus, I can see that 30 grams of benzene is the same thing as 0 0.39 moles of benzene. I have now finished step two. In step three, we need to use the stoichiometric coefficients in the chemical equation to create a reactant to product ratio. Here's how. We once again look at our balanced chemical equation, and then we think about it for a moment. We just discovered that 30 grams of benzene are the same thing as 0 0.39 moles of benzene. In this problem, I'm asked, how many moles of bromobenzene is that going to make? Well, let me ask you the question. If I started with one mole of benzene, how many moles of bromobenzene would I get? They're present in a one-to-one -one ratio, so yeah, I'd get one. What if I start with two moles with ben of benzene? How many moles of bromobenzene would I get? Well, I get two because they're present in a one-to-one -one ratio. What if I started with 65 jillion moles of benzene? How many moles of bromobenzene would I get? That's right, 65 jillion. So that now takes us to step four. Multiply the amount of moles or millimoles from step one by the ratio we generated in step three. We got 0.39 moles of benzene. I want to figure out how many moles of bromobenzene that's going to make. Now we've already reasoned our way through this, but let's do it using dimensional analysis. In the denominator, I need moles of benzene so that they cancel each other out. What do I put in the numerator? Moles of bromobenzene. And where did I get these numbers? This one is the coefficient in front of benzene. This one is the coefficient in front of bromobenzene. So once again, I can see in this balanced chemical equation, I have this reaction occurring in a one-to-one -one ratio. Thus, if I were to throw in 0.39 moles of benzene, I should get 0.39 moles of bromobenzene out. The second part of this question asked me, how many grams is that? How would I convert moles of bromobenzene to grams of bromobenzene? Well, I'm going to do dimensional analysis once again. In the denominator, I want to have moles of bromobenzene so that these cancel each other out. And what in the world am I going to put in the numerator? I'm going to put grams of bromobenzene. How many grams of bromobenzene are there in one mole of bromobenzene? 
Well, I calculated earlier there's 157.04. Where did I get that? Each carbon weighs 12, there's six of them. Each hydrogen weighs one, there are five of them. And each bromine weighs 79 point something. I add all that together and it gives me 157.04. Plug and chug on your calculator and we discovered that 0.39 moles of bromobenzene is indeed 61 grams of bromobenzene. Any questions? Good. I'll let you tackle part B on your own. Now this might not be completely clear yet, so we're going to go ahead and tackle an even harder one together. The complete combustion of octane, which has this formula and is the main component in gasoline, proceeds according to this balanced chemical equation. How many moles of O2 are needed to burn 1.5 moles of octane? How many grams of O2 are needed to burn 10 grams of octane? And octane has a density of this at this temperature. How many grams of O2 are required to burn 15 gallons of octane? I'm not going to do part C for you, but I will do parts A and B and let you attempt C on your own. Here's how we do part A. Once again, the question is how many moles of O2 are needed to burn 1.5 moles of octane? Step one is always balance the chemical equation. In this particular example, that's already done for us, so we don't have to worry about it. Step two says convert everything to moles or millimoles, unless it's already given to us in moles or millimoles. In this particular case, it is. We're given 1.5 moles of octane. The next step is use the ratio moles of octane to determine the thing we're trying to figure out. Let's go ahead and throw this down. 1.5 moles of octane. I want my answer to be in moles of O2. How in the world do I make that conversion? Well, in the denominator of the next set of brackets, I'm obviously going to want moles of octane. In the numerator, I'm going to have moles of O2. Can I relate these two? Of course I can. There are two moles of octane for every 25 moles of O2. Where did I get those numbers? This 2 is the coefficient in front of octane, and this 25 is the coefficient in front of oxygen, O2. Hence, these are present in a 2 to 25 ratio. I throw them down, plug and chug, and I discover that 1.5 moles of octane require 18.75 moles of O2. Question B says, how many grams of O2 are needed to burn 10 grams of octane? How do we do this? Once again, we remember, step one, bounce a chemical equation. We're already done with that. Step two, turn everything into moles or millimoles. I'm given 10 grams of octane. How do I convert that to moles or millimoles? Dimensional analysis. In the denominator, I want to have grams of octane so that they cancel each other out. In the numerator, I'll have moles of octane. How many grams are in one mole of octane? 114.09. Where did I get that? Well, I remember that carbon weighs about 12. There are eight of them. Hydrogen weighs one. There are 18 of them. I add that all together, and I get this number. Plug and chug with your calculator, and you discover that 10 grams of octane is the same thing as 0 0.0877 moles of octane. We've now converted that into moles of octane. But how in the world do I end up converting 0 0.0877 moles of octane into grams of O2? Dimensional analysis. In the denominator, I want moles of octane so that they cancel each other out. And in the numerator, I want moles of O2. Where do I get these numbers? 2 and 25. They are the coefficients in front of each of these respective reactants in the balanced chemical equation. At this point, I've now canceled out moles of octane, and I'm left with moles of O2. Is that what my question asked for? No, it's not. My question asked for grams of O2. So how do I move on to convert that into grams of O2? Well, I'm going to throw in the denominator of my next bracket set, moles of O2, so that these cancel each other out. I'm going to put grams of O2 on the top. Where did I get 32? Well, each molecule of oxygen has a formula of O2. Each oxygen atom weighs 16. Two of them weigh 32, so there are 32 grams in one mole. Plug and chug with your calculator, and I discover that 0 0.0877 moles of octane end up requiring 35 grams of O2. Any questions? Good. We'll see if we can tackle some more together in class. This brings us to a new topic, that of theoretical yield. As it turns out, we've already been doing this kind of problem in our earlier example involving benzene and bromobenzene. Nevertheless, I'm going to teach it to you in principle. A theoretical yield is the amount of product that you would calculatedly make from a given amount of reactant. To determine theoretical yield, we follow similar steps we've already done. Step one, we always balance the chemical equation. Step two, we convert everything we're given to moles or millimoles, unless it's already given to moles or millimoles. Step three, we use the ratio, the stoichiometrically balanced chemical equation, to determine how much product we get from a given amount of millimoles or moles of reactant. 
And step four, we multiply the amount of millimoles from step two by the ratio we got in step three. The amount of product we calculate is the theoretical yield. We've already totally done this with our bromobenzene benzene question, but I'm going to throw it to you again so that you can see that's indeed what we were doing. Question A, we were asked, when we start with 30 grams of benzene and we write with excess Br2, what's the theoretical yield of bromobenzene? In other words, how much would we make? We have to convert everything to moles. 30 grams of benzene. I use the formula weight of benzene and discover that's 0.39 moles of benzene. Now, how in the world do I convert 0.39 moles of benzene to moles of bromobenzene? In the denominator, I'm going to put moles of benzene. In the numerator, I'll put moles of bromobenzene. And you'll notice that they're present in a 1 to 1 ratio because there's a 1 and a 1 present as coefficients in front of each of these compounds in the balanced chemical equation. That ends up telling me that if I had 0.39 moles of benzene and I threw it in this chemical reaction, in theory, if everything went perfect, I should get 0.39 moles of bromobenzene. We've already done this, but that answer is the theoretical yield of bromobenzene in this circumstance.